what did you have for breakfast? A typical Kenyan will say the option with the sweet potatoes and in Doma is healthy. While the other one, having baked bread, is not healthy. Maybe because of the preservatives used. Some Kenyans who are knowledgeable in that field will even say that you need to add fruits and vegetables for a balanced diet. Well, what can I say? I think there is more information needed to answer that question. Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Once upon a time, before civilization came to the villages, the rivers were flowing free and you could even drink water directly from the river. Maybe the only thing you would have to worry about was amoeba and worms. Although papaya seeds were available for deworming, rainfall was predictable and enough for all farming activities. But that is history now. Demand for clean water in towns and farms is ever increasing. Yet at the same time, the rainfall pattern is quite unreliable. Where there are once rivers are now footpaths filled with stones and even just sand. And the sand is also harvested to meet the construction needs in the developing towns. That's a source of revenue for county governments in arid and semi-arid counties in Kenya. Now, today I have a lot to talk about in environmental conservation. This is a broad topic in environmental sciences, but today I want to focus on the tip of the iceberg. One of the big rivers in Kenya is called Athi River. If you visit the river today, you can appreciate the effect of water pollution. Most of the wastewater from Nairobi and its environs will finally find its way in this river. Look at this. It's a sad state we are finding ourselves in. There is nothing to smile about, as they like to say. Can you see that green floating carpet, like a football field? It's actually water hyacinth. This is one weed that is a serious challenge in water bodies. If you live around Lake Victoria, then you know what I am talking about. It is true that most industries in the cities and towns release their waste in wetlands and rivers in Kenya. That's sad, but it's true. Some of the chemicals released from these companies can lead to death or extinction of the original plants and animals in the wetlands. I will try to relate the challenges to what a farmer can understand best. Let's imagine that the wastewater released has fertilizer elements. This will lead to an enrichment of the water. That can cause some organisms to multiply exponentially, bringing serious competition of oxygen in the water. Remember the simple growth curve that we learned in high school? I would recommend you research more on the concept of biological oxygen demand. The idea is, if oxygen is consumed at a higher rate than it's replenished due to the sudden population growth of microorganisms, the other organisms like fish will suffocate and die. Of course, even the microbes will die eventually due to competition of resources. Is that so? Anyway, I hope the point is clear. Now, the other thing is these nitrates in water can affect little children if water is used for drinking. Have you ever heard of blue baby syndrome? Look it up. In this case, let's assume that the nitrates are from untreated sewage or effluent from these companies and sometimes from farm fertilizer use. Although from farm fertilizer, that's negligible, I would assume. Lately, fertilizer is not cheap and is not easily available. But either way, there are consequences. One other thing, sometimes the wastewater 
may have heavy metals like lead, zinc, mercury, cadmium, and many, many more. Well, there are chemical and mechanical ways of removing heavy metals from wastewater, but plants also help to achieve the same results. You can do your research and you will appreciate this. Now, can you see these other plants besides the higher seed, the ones with the big leaves? Most Kenyans believe that all arrow roots are grown organically and they come from the countryside, far from pollution. Is that really true? Most businessmen and farmers alongside this river take their produce back to the big city where there is high demand. My main worry is when the arrow roots are finally used for human food. Such plants are known to absorb the toxic materials suspended in water and store the highest concentration in the root tissues. So, next time you are having your breakfast, can you be sure what you are eating is safe? I guess it's high time that we should all start being concerned about the source of the food that we eat. Did you see the data about the increase in cancer cases in major towns in Kenya the other day? There are many factors attributed to that increase, but can we assume this one too? Environmental pollution is bad and it's unforgiving. What you throw away can eventually get back to your plate. It's kind of a cycle. Now, there are ways that institutions and companies process the wastewater before it is finally released to the rivers and other water bodies. They can implement a wastewater management system, often via the effluent treatment plants. Let me oversimplify the process by saying that the company constructs a series of pods so that the water is treated sequentially. So after some time, once the water is safe, it's then released to the river. It is also possible to introduce microbes and even plants like the ones you have seen, the iacid and the arrow roots, to help in bioremediation. So you wonder, why don't they implement this? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because the ETP is not cheap to establish and manage. Or maybe the natural ETP process is slow as compared to the daily wastewater volumes. Or maybe it's even how it's easy to corrupt the environmental inspectors. It becomes complicated, especially when you have vested interest in the process. But at what cost? Someday I will talk about the importance of traceability in farming. You see, for a farmer to export produce outside Kenya to the major export markets, he needs to be certified by the various international bodies. And within their regulations, there is usually an environmental conservation component that must be implemented. That's a video for another day. And before I forget, you have seen guys plowing up to the riverbank. Well, that's illegal too. I guess if you can access the proposed development plan of your land, there is usually a reserve left between your land beacons and a river or a road. In Kenya, you have seen in the news what happens to buildings constructed on a riparian land. Plowing or development next to riverbanks or valleys make the soil loose and can easily be eroded. You should leave an undisturbed buffer zone along such areas if they are within your farm. Let them be. Problems caused by erosion of riverbanks are often hard and expensive to control. At times, the natural vegetation cover and the tree roots tend to control it better. Plants are an important player in carbon sink. There are many other challenges brought about pollution of water bodies. Those in fish farming business 
understand the consequences of slight changes in water quality like pH, salinity, turbidity, and even temperature. At times, pollution is a matter of public health too. Bad smell and even diseases like cholera. Have you ever heard about E. coli and salmonella, especially in livestock products? There is also increase in pests like mosquitoes and rats. The list is endless. So, what else is healthy to eat if all that I've said is bad? I mean, Kenyans know that fast foods is a known problem. Chemical residues in farm products is another. And now, plastics and heavy metals in water? It's crazy, I know. My idea is not to spread fear, but to call for responsibility for every actor. Well, my advice is, firstly, learn to pray over food before eating. Secondly, we need to start being concerned about how the food that we eat is produced. If you can get certified organic products, it's okay. If you can grow your own, then that's even better. Finally, I think it's time for government ministries to put in place measures to reduce such risks. This should adopt like a multi-agency approach from environment, public health, agriculture, trade and industries, legal, name them all. The other day, I was looking on some data on the increase of counterfeit products in the Kenyan market and the figures are quite disturbing. Some even fake the Kenya Bureau of Standards sticker. The fake products even look more attractive than the original ones. Life is funny. Imagine even the spiritual life. Things are similar. We have con men and witch doctors disguised as men of God, twisting the gospel to fit their situations. Too much confusion. Anyway, what can I say? Guard your heart above all else and test the spirit. I know food safety is a big debate. I hope you have learned something today. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video and God bless you.